Recently in class we uh, stated and then proved the central limit theorem. And the purpose of this video is to uh, give a, a relatively simple example of a way we might apply the central limit theorem. And so in this example, maybe it comes from, you know, like a mechanical engineering application. Uh, we're thinking about something called breaking strength of a rivet. And the idea here is that um, for a particular class of rivet, rivets, the breaking strength uh, has a true mean value of uh, 10,000. And so that's our mu in this example. And uh, it has a standard deviation of 500, so this would be our sigma. So these are population quantities. And what the question is asking for is the probability that a sample mean, so of course, sample mean is an x bar. Um, so a sample mean breaking strength for a random sample of 40 rivets, so this would be um, a sample size of n, is between two different quantities. So 9,900 and uh, 10,200 psi. So of course, we can easily translate this statement into a formal probability statement. And the probability statement is that x bar, we'd like to know what the probability is that x bar is between 9,900 and uh, 10,200 psi. And so the standard way to do this is to rely on uh, the central limit theorem, which says that um, x bar minus the true mean mu divided by sigma over the square root of n converges in distribution to a normal 0, 1 under certain conditions like the uh, x i's that you have here uh, come from a random sample, so uh, independent and identically distributed. You have a finite mean and variance, um, but no other distributional assumptions really beyond that. Uh, so if we have this, then we know that x bar uh, has an asymptotic distribution normal mu sigma squared over n. And so what we're really asking, right, the probability that we're asking down here has to do with this quantity here. So we can really write this in terms of the CDF of a normal mu sigma squared over n. It's just that we don't have any great way of evaluating that. I guess we could do it in R or Python, right? We could use a, uh, a programming language to do this, and that would be fine. Another way to do this is just to standardize. So we could um, subtract off the true mean from all sides. So we'd have uh, 9,900 minus the true mean of 10,000 and then divide by uh, the uh, standard deviation of x bar so in this case that would be 500 over the square root of 40 and if we did that in the middle we would get a z and z would be a normal 0, 1 Right, basically, what we're left with is this quantity here, which we could call a z. Um, and you know, importantly, I guess we should say that this here is approximate equality. Uh, technically, the central limit theorem gives us convergence and distribution. What we're relying on here is that we have well a large enough sample size so that the probability having to do with the standard normal is a good approximation of the original probability. So maybe x bar isn't exactly normally distributed, but we're assuming that the approximation is, is relatively good for a sample of size 40. Okay, so the upper bound would be 10,200 minus 10,000 over same uh, 500 over the square root of 40. And then if we simplify, uh, we should get that this is the same as the probability that z, a standard normal, is between negative 1.265 and 2.53.
And now, you know, using some basic probability theory, we can write this in terms of the CDF of the standard normal. So uh, CDF of the standard normal evaluated at 2.53, so the upper uh, bound there, minus the CDF of the standard normal evaluated at negative 1.265 or so. And now we have things in terms of the CDF of the standard normal, which we can look up in a table. Um, so there are standard uh, tables that give you uh, values of the CDF of a standard normal, or you can uh, use R or Python or some programming language to find this out. So R in particular has uh, built-in functions that allow you to calculate the CDF. And so in R, the CDF is given by the function pnorm, and uh, the pnorm function takes in say the 2.53 and then you could specify the mean of 0 and the standard deviation of 1 or you know before you normalize if you wanted to calculate the probability here you could you know use the 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 approximate distribution of x bar which would have a different mean and a different variance and so when you do that um, and simplify a bit you should get something like around 0.892. So we're able to approximate this probability that the sample mean of the breaking strength for a, a random sample of size 40 uh, is between these two values, right? 9,900 and 10,200. We're able to do that by using um, the central limit theorem basically at this point here. So we normalized, we got a normal 0, 1, or approximately normal 0, 1, because of the central limit theorem, and then the rest is just some very basic probability theory. So this is one application of the central limit theorem, and we will use it quite a bit once we start um, discussing confidence intervals and hypothesis tests. So there are confidence intervals and hypothesis tests that make use of the central limit theorem uh, in order to uh, conduct their statistical inference.